Hello. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Let's see. If you could write in the chat box, if you, yep, oh good. Thank you, Tracy. Um, you're so good at letting me know <laughs> that you can hear me talk. Okay. Just gonna do a couple, turn this off. Oh, welcome. And happy new moon in uh, Leo, everyone, and kind of coming out of an intense uh, portal there with uh, eclipses and Mercury retrograde. It seems like everything and just everything was in retrograde and asking us to um, take a minute and pause and things from the past, whether I've talked to so many people literally all over the world where dreams um, coming up that they um, addressing childhood stuff they haven't thought about in years or um, a dear friend of mine um, got random, like one ex-boyfriend contacted her through email and another one contacted her through um, Facebook. And so it's just a lot of um, the past showing itself and then us having an opportunity to really choose and see where we're at now versus all this past energy coming up. And so, um, ah, new moon in Leo coming out of that, um, pretty intense for the last two months since June, a place of reflection and now getting, um, able to choose and see how we're going to go forward and like, what are we creating? And so I was tuning into that on my, uh, walk today, um, with my dogs and, and listening to the land here. I was away for a couple weeks down by the coast and we just got back into, I live in um, Appalachia, the mountains of North Carolina. And because we've been gone, the dogs haven't been really barking. So there's been a lot of bear activity and there's been, um, I saw uh, two foxes. There's just been a lot more activity around the house because usually the dogs bark and uh, keep everyone at bay. and you know, just reflecting on when humans, like when we pause or we become very still or we go away, you know, what nature does. It, like, it's, it, it comes back in and it thrives and, and feeling into Pachamama in a way. We've been tending to the land here pretty every day and being gone, coming back, we can feel her, like the the conversation starting to come um, back online and not that it goes away, but it's just like, Oh, catch up. And it was um, interesting to me today when I was in reflection uh, leading up to this webinar of how do we be in sacred reciprocity and how do we live in Aini in a way that um, cultures that live close to the earth naturally do, or at least did in their indigenous practices. And I've mentioned this before, if you've been on other webinars, but the, the shamans in different cultures, you know, we have a very westernized or can have a very westernized um, idea of what a shaman is. And you go to a shaman and you're he you become healed out of the spirits or this or that. But primarily what the medicine man or woman was for the community was the voice and the um, intermediary of the earth and the elements, the animals, and the people. So it's like the, the Pachamama had a spokesperson because when things were really off, they relied on that spokesperson to be able to listen deeply and know, has the community, has their, um, the people been out of Aini, A-Y-N-I, which means sacred reciprocity. You know, and or is there and that can be is there been an imbalance of um, not tending to the grief of the community and not tending to the emotions and letting the emotions go wild. And then that's not an I need and the earth's response to that. So there's a really beautiful um, book called uh, The Spell of the Sensuous by David Abrams. And he speaks a little bit about this as well as the book. Um, the shaman's doorway 
I think I'll put it in the, the notes um, in the recording. Yeah, and those are two really beautiful books that speak to this fact that before it was about um, humans receiving their healing. First and foremost, the medicine person was about tending to the relationship between the community and the earth. Because if we're in balance, as we can see in our world today, if we are out of balance with the earth, with Pachamama, Mother Gaia, as we're seeing, like it doesn't matter like what our what us doing in our human lives, like there there will be a uh, reckoning, so to speak, and we're we're seeing that um, now uh, in a lot of ways. And we, uh, my partner and I, just watched Avatar, the movie um, that came out I don't know ten years ago with um, the blue people. If anyone's seen it, um, I was obsessed with this movie when it first came out. Like obsessed. I saw it like 11 times in the theater, like ridiculous amounts. Um, it just spoke so deeply to my heart and the part, um, this is going to be a spoiler, just FYI, if you haven't seen it. Um, the, the part that's so profound to me in this movie and we just watched it recently and I cried again and it felt like, okay, like the, the earth is responding is at the, um, well, I will give it all away, but there's, um, conflict between the humans and the Westerners and, you know, um, the white colonizers that have gone to another planet and are taking over the indigenous um, world because there's mining to be had there that's uh, worth a lot of money. And the people there live in, they, their, their goddess or their god or their mother earth is Awa. And it's very much um, in alignment with the natural rhythms of the earth and the animals and the spirits and the way they even hunt. It's very much, it's, I mean, it's very clear. It's like Western white colonizers and then indigenous people and the difference of how they see and feel and are with the earth. And anyways, in the, in the, the, the crux of the movie, when you're just like, Oh God, this isn't good. Um, the earth rises and all of the creatures, um, rise against this machine so to speak and i you know secretly not secretly hope that happens here when i you know as it gets to this uh, breaking point you know the animals actually became conscious in a way and helped the indigenous people um win this fight and um you know in in that again, like preparing for really sitting with, as I do in any webinar, I get worked within my being is like, how am I truly living in I need like right now? Not how I was six months ago and not how I was a year ago and not how I was when I lived in a tent, you know, 15 years ago. Yeah, but how am I right now? You know, I'm on the computer more than I've ever been in my life. Um, and you know, in creation in different ways. So really having to pause, ask, and this is what we all have to do, like present time, moment to moment. How are we in right relationship with the earth around us? And so tonight um, we're going to go into a journey because for me, I can give you the context in the um, books to read, but really in stepping into this sovereignty and a awakened embodied way, it's really about experience. And that's um, my truth, at least with it. And um, what I like to hold is that we get to go and we get to experience and have a dialogue with Pachamama, have a dialogue with Mother Gaia and check in. You know, what is, what is she, when's the last time we sat down or laid on the earth? It might've been last weekend, but when do we do it regularly where we, go and empty ourselves out of the mental ideas out of you know also the asking the want you know and to really empty and then ask what do you need how can we be in better relationship how am i showing up in this vital relationship you know the mother gaia is constantly giving to us it supports this whole gig right this whole play that we're all in she is what's supporting us. You know, we have our spirit and we have our prana and our vitality and connection to the divine and Mother Gaia, Pachamama, not being separate from that, but on a physical 3D level, 
she is what supports this whole process. And so, yeah, it's, it's really been, um, I was in a deep ceremony recently and the, the relationship and the dialogue of really getting that, like really getting it and letting it come, not in the mind, but in all energy systems and all different bodies, um, really got to a different level of, okay, you know, how can we consistently have this in our awareness? of the giving and receiving because it is also the receiving It's not that especially um, especially if you're on a webinar about how to connect with the earth most of us have that consciousness already of how to be in better relationships um, and how to and are actively in engagement with sustainable practices you know and what can happen there what I've seen is people really dedicated to the earth and dedicated to um, doing their part and then forgetting to listen and to receive because it's like any relationship that does that's off balance too where she wants to um, give she wants to give you the guidance give you the healing and um, and I'm guilty of this when I'll go into the woods and I have my offerings and really from my heart just like deep prayer and thanks and gratitudes and make the offering and then keep on going keep on going, you know, wherever I'm at the river and offering the roses and, you know, very rarely, um, have I, and I'm doing better about it now, but to, to pause and wait and listen as much as I am in the prayer and from my heart, but to really sit and listen to, um, what's the, what's the dialogue back? When I spend time offering roses to the river um, in different ritual practices, and then here in talking to the spirit of the river, very rarely do I spend just as much time letting her speak to me. And that's something that I've been in dialogue and in practice with is to let that pause take place. You know, the earth speaks in different tones and in different ways than we do. It's not as usually as fast, you know, when, how can we let the pause and the, um, the dialogue have massive space because it is going to be different than I'm speaking right now. If y'all were unmuted, you'd speak to me to do, 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 you know, what, what is the way that certain rivers have their song and their dialogue? They're going to be different. So this is just what's been on my heart and and I've been in um, inquiry about. So it's the, um, just the inspiration to be with all of you and let's take this journey together to be able to listen deeply and receive how we can be and greater Aini um, for the earth and also for ourselves and receive the healing, give the healing. We can truly experience um, right relationship on all levels. So thank you for listening to all of that. And like always, we're just going to get comfy. Get a glass of water. We're going to be closing our eyes here in a moment. So finding a comfortable seated position, closing the eyes, and tuning into the breath. And then also finding your seat, like what does that mean? Feeling your sit bones supported not only by the floor, the chair, but by Pachamama. Letting the awareness go beyond the building as if we are all outside together in sacred circle, 
on this new moon evening, perhaps a fire lit in the middle. What does it feel like to be supported by her? Making that energetic connection with your grounding cord is an energetic connection that goes from the base of the spine all the way into the heart of the mother, Mother Gaia Pachamama. Having this cord be as wide as the hips Noticing how that changes the energetics when we allow the connection to her be wide and capable. So allowing our root to have strength and support. You know, sometimes or frequently, more frequently than not, our grounding cords are like dental floss and then we wonder why we don't feel grounded, why things are not manifesting on the physical realm. So allowing our grounding cords to be wide and open. Oh, For those who have not sat with me or worked with me, I burp, make weird loud noises. And moving the energy of the group's soul. So I'm just going to name some things that want to be offered into Pachamama before we go on our journey. So I see this um, electricity, almost like slight anxiety to anxiety up in the field, specifically like around the solar plexus and the throat the mind also going. So we're just going to also put a grounding cord um, in between the eyebrows, the ajna, the third eye, just letting any uh, mind stuff like um, fog or just even if it's excitement about the future, there's just a lot of um, uh, stimulus in the mental body. So just letting that Compost, we can be right here, right now. And then as if there's grounding cores on every cell of your body even deep in the organs. And they all just like pop open, like putting a sunroof open on the cells that are the grounding cords, just allowing all the cells to ground into the earth and release. So we may sink into presence as we receive as when we're hiking or out in nature for a while. So invoking that same presence, that deep breath from being on computers and emails and all that. Life, cars, traffic, airplanes and seeing. We go back to finding our root and our connection with feet, the chakras wide open 
as we used to be as creatures and humans that walked everywhere. Can you imagine the rhythm of walking to where you're going everywhere, every footstep on the earth. breath and the soul collective. So from the base of the spine with that grounding cord as wide as the hips, I'm gonna travel down that grounding cord. Letting your awareness, it can go almost like a slide but slowly noticing if your grounding cord is twisted. I see some knots actually. So just having, as we go down, we get to uh, make it smooth and capable. If we're not used to grounding, it might feel like, a, um, like when we let a balloon go, the string of a balloon all over the place. Just allowing that we're, our consciousness, we're letting gravity do its job. We're just going down and down and down. To where we get to the heart of Pachamama, Mother Guy, right in her molten core, the Earth Star. So just like there's a golden sun deep in our belly, a sun above our head, our soul light, and a beautiful central sun at the heart of the universe. Tuning in to the earth star, the earth sun, this beautiful golden light in the heart of Pachamama. What does it feel like to rest here? What does it look like? What do you sense? <coughs> and just as we would travel to star nations or to the higher realms for those who journey with me, you're opening our inner vision, our inner senses. You might not see, but you might have a knowing as we go on the journey. Resting deep at the earth star in the heart. Watch your mama, the golden light. You can feel the difference too when we sink into the center, to the heart of her, the vitality that starts to automatically fortify and offer itself back up to our being. So you might have sensations of heat or energy coming back up your grounding cord or into your body. Resting awareness in the heart of the earth. So feeling into this golden light, the earth star, and in your mind's vision, Turning around within this earth star, noticing the landscape it might start to shift and morph. Is it a bright star as you penetrate the bright star, does it become a garden? 
right? Walls, a temple. Letting yourself walk around this inner sanctum of the earth. The intention in the heart is to have a conversation with Mother Gaia, the spirit, that being herself. So letting yourself follow your body in this inner sanctum, knowing that it's going to lead you to the perfect moment and place where Mother Gaia Pachamama is waiting for you. Like all relationships that are particular and specific to each of us, we will have our different way of meeting Pachamama, Mother Gaia. This is an intimate relationship with us and her. So allowing the pathway to meet her be uniquely true and for you. Hmm. Welcoming this conversation. What does she look like? What's the dialogue like any being we get to meet in these multidimensional spaces? She's been waiting for you, knows more than you probably realize. And allowing the communications, the dialogue to take place. Having in your heart, if it's true, the desire asking her what? How can I deepen my relationship with you? How can I walk in Aini? So as soon as I say that, the well ancestors from your different lines are coming up to support and celebrate this meeting. Just knowing, noticing that, nothing to do about it. the ancient ones, the ancient ones of your people that knew how to walk in right relationship. It's in your blood. They're here to support you in this remembering. Letting the exchange deepen just a little bit more. There's another layer of presence.
and an offering from your heart to Pachamama. Making that offering with your heart, your prayers to her now. And allowing the exchange to come to completion with gratitudes from the heart. Really listening to the guidance offered when it comes to the ask of how to be in communication with her and sacred reciprocity in really specific ways. Thanks. Now you can, the invitation is to visit, listen, develop, deepen the relationship. And traveling back up that grounding cord, noticing if it's gotten smaller, if it's still as wide as the hips or have gotten wider. Notice the color, has it changed? Have, what do you feel? Coming back up. Noticing the flow, coming back into the body at the base of the spine. Feeling into the root chakra. Muladhara, earth. This natural connection, energetic resonance, the blueprint to connect with the earth effortlessly as a child of her is right here. So just as the seat of ascension and kundalini resides in the base of the spine, so does the seat of connection and remembering. Feeling into the center, noticing the size, the vibrancy, the health of this center, corresponding to the kidneys, to the adrenals. the urinary tract system. And turning the awareness back to the breath, it goes all the way up and down the spine. Resting back into the heart center. Breathing the heart open on the front and the back. And 
Slowly opening your eyes when you're ready. And feeling free to take some moments to write down something. So I meant to make an announcement. In the past, these have been 8 to 8.30, and I've decided to, um, so feel free to jump off if you need to. Um, they'll start at a specific time clearly, um, but to have it more open-ended. It won't ever go over um, 45 minutes or an hour, but I've noticed there's a lot of energies that want to come through at certain times, and I've been way too in the mind of like, oh shit, it's 8.30, I need to get off, when some really powerful transformation I can tell is happening for some people. So um, I'm going to, and I'll make an announcement more clearly um, on the links and on all the things that it's really gonna be up to the guides and up to each, the soul group. Some soul groups, you know, it's quick, some it's not. So um, want it to be more fluid and uh, spirit time versus trying to get the 8.30 mark. Um, that being said, I didn't say that before, so if you need to jump off, totally understand. Um, but feel free to write down um, any insights. Uh, journeys are like dreams. You think you're going to remember, and then they somehow become very wispy um, in a way. Um, so um, there's not too much to say that came through. Um, was this helpful? I guess is question one. <laughs> You want to write in the chat if you received some helpful uh, guidance or just experienced you know going down into the earth star and feeling into her in that way um, and if you were able to have that exchange so and when oh that's the thing that I wanted to say about it is as you go forward whatever the guidance was if you received some to um, on what the next steps are and how to be in better relational uh, intimacy with uh, Mother Gaia. You know, what came for me one time is, um, you know, I'm more into the prayer work and uh, tuning in and, and doing on the energetics. But what I had failed to do recently is let that also translate deeper into the 3D. And so I was told um, very specifically um, there's an organization that really is caring, taking care of the waters and cleaning up the waters and to make, um, what is it called? Tithing, um, to offer, to make offerings money financially, uh, on the 3d as well. Um, other people I know are really great. They, um, they're very well off financially and they make, and they do really beautiful things with their money and give to make sure the organizations that they give to is not just going to this big, corporation thing that trickles down um and yet they we were talking one day and um they lacked the energetic connection and the energetic i need so it can be both and you know so there's a way that you know how do we energetic and with our hearts and our prayers and presence when we go out into the woods are we just like thinking is it a way to unwind from our day and we're thinking about like the emails are we thinking about you know the things to do the next creations um or the conversation we had with our boss that keeps ruminating or are we really present you know like really what's what's happening right now on the earth in your walk, you know, and, and your presence is such a gift as well. So, um, you know, this is really about how to stay uh, wakeful and how to stay wakeful on the 3D, the Kaya Pacha, when we're walking, when we're in relationship, and then also how on these different dimensional inner uh, travel space, like be an I me as well. Um, there's a story in, um, I think it's the spell of the sensuous book I was mentioning of the the medicine um, person never left his his hut and was in deep relationship during this time period um, when he was in prayer uh, to help get the um, to help uh, balance out the Aini and you know was in deep prayer and through that became um, 
in Aini and the rains came. So there's a lot of stories like that in the book. Um, you know, so it's, we don't all, especially if we live in a city and, you know, it's not like that in order to be an, deep connection with the earth, you have to get out into the woods every day. Um, not at all. You know, it can be from um, this place of intention and presence in the heart and just sending out that the gratitudes and the prayers and the connection, right? So, um, you know, as we're going into this new earth and this new paradigm, the age of the Aquarius, whatever lens we want to look with, it's about relationships. And that means being in relationship with all beings in a more mindful and conscious way, which means having a chat with Pachamama, which means having a chat with the, um, you know, the bear people. That was one thing that I was guided to do is like go, I did this when I first got here is like travel journey, you know, make offerings to the bear clan. Like, I don't, I respect, this is your home. And we just happen to have this little house here. Um, and I want everyone to be safe. I want my dogs to be safe. Um, I want to be safe. And so having that dialogue. Um, and so I just, oh, it's fun. Everyone's just coming in now. Um, and, you know, so it's how, how can we fine tune our wakefulness and be like, what does it mean? Like, you know, may all beings be free from suffering. And also may we have um, good relations with all beings. Like, what does that even mean? You know, like, how do we really do that? Um, so, you know, I hope this uh, inspires you and sparks some aha moments or even just inquiries on how to uh, look at things in a different way and, and, and feel into our relationship with the earth and the beings that are there um, in the inner planes, the spiritual planes. And then if you've got guidance on how in the 3D that you can do that, which is to, you know, I'm sure probably all of us recycle at this point, you know, but if it's, you know, maybe to do the cleanup at the river down the road, or maybe do this, like to, um, to, to follow through, right. That's how we develop trust in all relationships as we follow through with our word. And yeah. So, uh, thank you all. I want to read some of the comments. Oh, Alicia. Hi. I went on quite a journey. It was deep, somewhat somber. I went on a trip across the ocean and then all of a sudden, I was plunged deep into the depths, lots of tears. I sensed my relationship was to hear that she is sad at how disconnected we are. I was reminded of my powerful connection to children and the access I have to bring them out to be with mother nature. I actually had to take a deep breath when I felt like I couldn't breathe and then laid down. Ironically, all this happened inside my air conditioned super eight hotel room. <laughs> oh, I love you. Yeah, I feel that it's intense. I'm that one ceremony I've been in recently it was and connecting into the earth it was it was not all roses it was deep intense grief intense feeling of where we've all gotten askew um Tracy when I asked the question of how I can deepen my connection with mother Gaia she said through our breathing into one another through our hearts and by setting my intention that we are connecting deeply to one another. The entire time the journey has been thundering outside. I love it. Oh, all of these make me want to cry. Um, thank you. It's so true. It's like, ah, oh, it's all through the heart and intention and love and taking the time to be present with the children, our world, you know, we can, or I can like, chop it up into chapters of this Facebook live this week and then next week. And it's all the same thing. It's all, how do we truly live from our hearts in an awakened way where we can connect with each other, connect with the earth, connect with it all and really birth a new way of being on the planet. So with that, thank you all so much. Thank you for hanging in with me and I love you all. And, um, look forward to the next time. Uh, next Wednesday is going to be, um, we're kind of flip flopping from deep into the earth to, um, receiving, uh, blessings and uh, activations from the lion's gate star portal, which I'm really excited about. Um, oh, you're welcome, Amanda. And it's going to be a powerful activation. Um, I had to actually slow it down because I started to tune in 
and getting all the activations already. And I was like, okay, no, I gotta, I gotta like stay present with what we're doing tonight. So it's going to be, um, a powerful journey and I'll have that link up soon and it's really going to be setting the stage what I've been told is so it's Lionsgate in the portal and working with the Syrian energy that's coming through and how that opens up um, a lot of uh, direct channels and but it's also going to take us through the next cycle and I think it was 66 days they told me I have to go back and look at my um, notes and and then I, um, and I think I've read somewhere astrologically, like there is this next portal phase and I don't know exactly if that lines up with that or not, but that's just what I heard. So, um, I'm looking forward to that and oh yay. And then there's going to be the 21 day activation, um, process that starts that Thursday after the Wednesday. So next Thursday on, on eight, eight is every morning, 9am. I know for a lot of like teachers and moms, that's not a great time. Um, but I had to balance it out from West Coast people and Europe that um, more and more people are wanting to jump on. So 9 a.m. every single day, um, I have a sort of broad plan of what they said is going to be happening, but it's truly, we're all going to be meditating together and we're all going to be getting activated. And I get a little bit of a heads up what's going on, um, a broad view of how we're working with the different systems and then also, depending on who all shows up in the soul group, that can shift at any moment. But I think you all know that about my work at this point or um, the energy that comes through. All right. I love you. Have a great night. Felicia, have a good night. And you're, I think you're coming home soon. Um, and I will speak to you all hopefully next week.